From the beginning, man understood the importance of recording human experience for future use. But recording it was so painfully slow that entire lives were devoted to nothing else. The ancient scribe who devoted months to creating a single manuscript would never believe that you deal routinely with millions of data every day or that one day a machine would process more information in milliseconds than he did in a lifetime. Your basic concerns, though, are the same as his. You are looking for a way to store more information in less space on a durable medium where you can recover it quickly. The endless quest for the ideal memory has led scientists, designers, and engineers to greatly improve memory technologies in recent years. But at Bell Telephone Laboratories, a fundamentally new technology has been invented and developed. Magnetic bubbles. With the first of these new memory components already field tested and coming off production lines at Western Electric, a new era has been defined. We have entered the bubble generation. Andy Bobeck, a Bell Labs engineer whose specialization in new devices has led to over a hundred original patents, has been instrumental in converting magnetic bubbles from a laboratory curiosity into a useful technology. Well, it's been known for a very long time that uh, domains can exist in certain magnetic materials. As a matter of fact, the existence of the magnetization in these permanent magnets is proof of one such uh, domain pattern. The stability evidenced in these magnets has been used to, to retain data, for example, in core memories, uh, magnetic disks, and magnetic tape. As a matter of fact, here at the laboratories for over 10 or 15 years, researchers like Williams and Sherwood have been researching magnetic materials that house domains and studying their domain patterns. The patterns you see in, for example, in this model, in the actual material itself, are extremely fascinating. And uh, people spend a lifetime studying uh, you know, their properties and, and their characteristics. The real breakthrough came uh, when we went to flat magnetic materials. And after a fair amount of, of research and looking through various magnetic materials, we chanced upon the garnet system, uh, which is shown here. And we found that we could grow extremely uniform, highly perfect films uh, on substrates of this type. And these films could be used to house many, many millions of bubbles. As a matter of fact, this particular film of this size will house about 5 billion magnetic bubbles. Then it was just simply a matter of doing a little bit of work, learning how to generate a bubble, move a bubble, detect a bubble, and uh, pretty soon we were in a position to put this device into manufacture, uh, a device like the 29A here. It's not very imposing. That's true, but neither is the transistor or the silicon chip, really. It's what it does that counts. But what does it do? Well, it fills a gap that exists in the present memory hierarchy. As you know, there are magnetic memories of the mechanical type, like the mechanical disk, the magnetic tape. These are extremely slow and have response times that are measured in human response times in terms of seconds and milliseconds. Uh, they are, however, extremely low cost per bit, but they come in very large sizes. Your basic building block is 10 million bits or 100 million bits at a clip. At the other end of this spectrum, we find the solid state devices. The old ferrite core is still there, and the newer devices like the silicon RAM. And bubbles will serve to fill the gap that exists between the high-speed memories on one end and the slow-speed memories on the other. Now, bubbles are not as uh, low cost as the mechanical devices, but they are faster, and they're not as, uh, as high cost as, as the silicon devices at the other end, uh, but they are slower. One maxim of business management is that when you finally have enough information, a decision will make itself. But some leadership decisions cannot wait. They require information stores that are power efficient and reliable, with high access speed, high storage density, and manufactured to the most exacting standards. At Western Electric's manufacturing center at Reading, Product planner Jim Eckhoff explains the emphasis on such high production standards. We here at Western Electric are involved in manufacturing products, first of all, for the Bell system. Our Bell Labs engineers 
design products for us to put into manufacture with the primary concern being on quality and high standards. But we're also very concerned about being able to put that product into high level production. Therefore, we make certain that that product has been proven in the laboratory and very, very well shaken down before we attempt to put it into production. One of the newest product lines is a magnetic bubble. We have a very long-term, serious, and deep commitment to put magnetic bubbles into high-level production. We have allocated substantial resources in terms of money and manpower to stand behind this commitment. Magnetic bubble products that we have available today compete very favorably with many of the magnetic types of recording devices that are available. And the products of tomorrow, such as this prototype breadboard of a PBS or a parallel bubble store, will increase the performance characteristics of magnetic bubbles such that the potential applications for tomorrow are many times what we've been able to identify today.